to be demonstrating a few things I like to do to make tying a bass popper a little easier and a little bit more of an effective fly in the water. And starting with adding the foam to the hook as opposed to cutting the foam or uh, any other manner. I'm going to tie a burlap underbody uh, parallel with the eye of the hook uh, that will be the base for gluing the foam onto and preventing it from spinning around the hook. Just begin at the eye and lash down uh, enough burlap that will cover the foam body. Don't cut the burlap right at the, the bottom but uh, leave about a quarter inch tag end to fold forward and uh, further widening the burlap underbody. The idea here is that you'll tie a, a piece on each side of the shank to uh, make a a wide yet flat underbody and again it, it must be parallel with the eye of the hook. Let's repeat the process on both sides of the shank. Folding the tag end forward. Locking down. Now you can see that there's a, a fair bit of width to this, and uh, yet it still remains about the same depth as the shank of the hook. So just whip finish this. And proceed to uh, coat with a lacquer. Ensure to put enough lacquer on there that absorb into the burlap. Uh, this will make the, the underbody rock solid. And now uh, insert the foam just down the hole that comes with a uh, preformed foam body. The eye of the hook will uh, elongate the hole in that direction, the same direction that the burlap underbody has been tied, so the burlap will then take up uh, the space of the elongated hole. And once the lacquer is hardened, um, it will make a very uh, durable foundation to keep that foam body in place. Ensure to push on the front of the, uh, the foam body um, and, and watch that as you come forward, and once it does start moving, sometimes it can go rather quickly and uh, you're, you're pushing right at a point of the hook, so just keep that in mind. Make sure the foam body is 90 degrees to the bend of the hook, and set aside to, uh, to dry before continuing on with the popper. The next step is to uh, paint or decorate the foam body. Uh, this is going to be a frog style popper. You can see that I put a little bit of the green under the underbody that I leave white just so you can pick up the highlights and the silhouette of the uh, popper a little bit better when it's in the water. You can also add a weed guard to the popper. Uh, do this using 80 to 100 pound test mono. Uh, take a pair of pliers and, and crimp the end to flatten it and then tie it just behind the foam body uh, extending backwards and uh, leave it like that. Um, the last step of the fly will be wrapping that for pulling that forward and creating the actual weed guard. The next tip for tying a frog style popper is to create a, a bulge of uh, dubbing uh, which will go behind the hackle fibers that will be tied in for legs. Um, this will serve to uh, keep the legs uh, spread apart in the water and as you uh, pull the fly through the water the, the um, bulge will push them back open to make it uh, appear like a frog as it would be kicking along in the water. Uh, I like to use a synthetic dubbing for this as it can you can really uh, make a tight dubbing rope and uh, tie a very solid uh, clump of dubbing on the hook. So let's take a fisheye view of the effect that this has in the water. You can see that uh, at a rest the 
legs are held apart, a natural looking frog silhouette, and, and as pulled forward they uh, pulsate and uh, flare out again once the popper's back at rest. Um, ultimately here we've achieved a, a, a good silhouette of a, a frog in the water. As you can see that little bit of green paint on the bottom of the popper allows this profile of the head to be uh, picked out a little bit better and the dark hackle fibers mixed in with the light hackle fibers uh, give the, the legs a good uh, mottled tone but uh, having the dark fibers in there uh, gives it a high better uh, silhouette or profile. Uh, it's the same reason why blacks work so well in uh, at night as they have a very hard edged profile to the fish. Finish the fly by uh, adding some material to take up the gap between the foam and the hackle fibers. I've used marabou and there you have it, a completed frog foam popper. If you've added a weed guard at this point uh, use a bodkin to poke a hole through the foam body and uh, then insert the mono through the foam and superglue in place. Uh, the superglue will hold it adequately enough that it should survive uh, several good beatings from fish. And then uh, just trim off the tag end and uh, you've completed the weedless foam popper. Here's a look at a couple different patterns. As I was saying, the blacks are a great choice for low light or nighttime conditions. Uh, red and white is always a good choice for pike or largemouth bass and uh, a couple of different frog poppers. These are my tips for tying a foam bass popper.